And we are back with more conversation. And of course, our special guest in the chair tonight, Mr. Stephen Cadiz, and uh, a healthy panel, of course, with quite a few questions. I did say we had 10 more minutes, but I knew we started about 12 minutes late, so I'm told by our director that we're going to get the extra time to continue. So we've added the 12 minutes that we lost at the top of the program onto the rest of the show. So we still have got some healthy discussion to continue. So let's go back to our panel. Well, well, I prefer to go back to the first, how we did it in the first instance. That was a lot easier. Which is? In the first part of the program. Oh, you mean? <laughs> it was easier then? It was easier then. <laughs> it, only gets, it only gets tougher <laughs> as we go along. That, I think that happens with anything. It's like life. It only gets harder. Yes. <laughs> Back Sorry. Back. Back. Right. Minister, I have a question for my friend. He's a transportation planner, and he believes the Ministry of Transport has failed. And he wants to know why isn't transportation planning included in planning context in Trinidad? And why hasn't transportation modeling been incorporated in the planning? He's right. I mean, basically, he is very right that that has not been at the forefront, okay, of, 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 of successive administrations. This administration, I think, has, um, has by, by doing an alternative analysis to the issues of transport, and I'll tell you something, I, I'm speaking, for instance, with the, with the Maxi Taxi um, Association, do you know they have very, very good ideas and solutions to how we can, we, can, um, we, we can deal with our traffic issues, and nobody has listened to them, all right? We have gone and sat down with the, with the associations. There is the local expertise. We are always talking about uh, opportunities and what have you. There's the, uh, the, the there is, is the local expertise. Right here in Trinidad and Tobago, very experienced traffic engineers. Okay, that have the answers to, the, to some of these issues. And it's just about uh, any government, a government taking the bull by the horns and saying, right, this is, what, this, this is what, how we have to do it. All right, and which is what um, the Ministry of Transport, this Ministry of Transport, that is exactly what we are doing. We are listening to what, what, um, what has been there for many, many years, what has been proposed, and what works. It's, 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 it's simple. A lot of it is fairly, fairly simple. Minister, if I may. In terms of environmentalism, what has your ministry done to ensure a greener Trinidad and Tobago? Well, we met a very not green Trinidad and Tobago. Our carbon footprint is probably one of the worst, in the, in the top worst countries in the world is our carbon footprint. And that's as a result of our energy, energy business, OK? But what is it that you can do? And, and again, this all takes over a period of time. We are going to green the public transport service system. So all buses in Trinidad and Tobago will either be run off of CNG or electric buses. Okay? Now, you can't do that overnight because there are budgets for under consideration. There is the availability of CNG, etc. But if we did that, the amount of money that we would actually save in the fuel subsidy would be phenomenal. And of course, you, you change your carbon footprint immediately. Once you can get your auto, automotive business um, or area um, change the different fuel, then things start to happen. Let me give you another for instance, the Tobago ferries. The Tobago ferries burn about $100 million worth of diesel a year. Okay? By running those ferries on LNG, which is proven technology, this is not rocket science, this is proven technology, we can save $100 million a year, which is why when I say that about changing the agencies from heavily subsidized agencies to agencies that actually can break even without changing the, the ticket price. For instance, a, a ticket price to go to Tobago is $50. If we change the fuel from diesel to LNG, I can charge the same $50 and yet still I can break even with brand new boats. So we change all the buses. The priority bus route at some stage will become a green route. So anybody driving on the priority bus route will have to be using alternative fuel vehicles. So maxi taxis and PTSC buses. We, we, we would change that. And in our own way, we can, we can actually make a difference just with, with, the, with the Ministry of Transport. What do you think is like the biggest challenge you'd like to deal with if you all come back into office and one... When we come back into office. <laughs> I like, I'm a kind of a positive guy, all right? Optimistic, yeah. The challenges? Yeah, something that you would like to deal with that you didn't get yeah. to. 
Um, I don't want to talk out of turn. Again, I'm a, I have collective responsibility with the cabinet. Of course, I'm, I have some of my own views, even though when you're in government, you have no personal views. All right? But there are issues. Um, if, I took, if I looked at uh, um, in transport, the whole issue of dealing with traffic, it's a nightmare out there. We all know that. And there has to be a way in which we can convince Trinidad and, to, and Tobago that riding on a bus is a good thing. Okay? You don't need to go in your own car. You can ride on a bus. You can have Wi-Fi on the bus. You could plug in all your music. You could do whatever you want on the bus. The technology is all there. So you don't have to be a pensioner, a school child, or less fortunate than the other one where you have to ride on the bus. All right? So we're going to make it where you can be using public transport. So that would be one of the major things. I would like to see where um, in the public service that we take a very, very close look at the public service um, and that there is a program for the reformation of the, of the public service where we actually have a public service that is there to serve people and not to be a, um, a negative um, thing when it, when, it, when it comes to um, dealing with, with, with public issues and public management and what have you. And it can work. Sir, uh, we, we can make it happen. Given that before the break you were speaking about providing equal opportunity to all citizens and given providing, that sorry? equal opportunity for all citizens yeah. and provide it and given that uh, the UNC is committed to, uh, in their constitution, Article 2, subsection 3, to eliminate all forms of discrimination, whether based on race, color, origin, religion, gender, class, or region, and to ensure equal treatment is meted out to all citizens by public or private authority through the medium of education and awareness and the establishment of appropriate mechanisms, procedures, and institutions, how come in the People's Partnership's last administration there has been no move to meet with organizations that have been asking for the inclusion of the, the prohibition against discrimination against uh, LGBT, mem LGBT members in the country. And uh, what aim does the UNC have in particular, given that this is, given that this is uh, enshrined in their constitution, to regularize LGBT members' experience in the country? Yeah. That's a hard one, huh? <laughs> you know that. Um, I think Trinidad eventually will become that country, okay? That there will be zero discrimination, okay? Um, when you look at the society now, it's it's. I would say it would be challenging for for that to happen. I'm being I'm being very honest and factual about it, okay? Um, as far as I'm aware, there's zero, there's no discrimination when it comes to job opportunities and what have you with anybody. There's zero, there's zero discrimination. In fact, the other day, not too long ago, Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa announced where there would be no discrimination when it came to, to um, remuneration for, um, depending on your gender, all right, or where women were making less than men in the, in the same job. And we're working to, to correcting that in, in, a real, in a real sense, all right? Um, the issue with the community that you're speaking of. Um, again, Trinidad and the Trin Trinidad and Tobago society has to change. A, so government, I, a government can't change it. I don't think civil rights are an issue that need to be democratic voted on. Civil rights are, in, are innate rights. Agreed. And so yeah. uh, you were speaking about uh, gender, the, the gender pay gap. Uh, and how the UNC is trying to address that, but respectfully, I didn't ask about the gender pay gap. I asked specifically about how the UNC is intending to enshrine in law that discrimination against members of the LGBTQI uh, community is absolutely forbidden. I think, I think coming, um, coming back into office, I, I do believe that that will come and be, become a, a, a more of an issue than, than it is now. I'm not dodging the question. I don't have the, 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 the answer because I do believe Trinidad and Tobago, that will be incremental steps that we take um, to, to, to do that. Um, and I mean, if you, look, if you look at Trinidad's history over the years of the discrimination against, from voting, from women's rights for voting, for Baptist rights, to Hindu marriages, to, I mean, there's a host of things coming through Trinidad's um, um, more modern history of, of, of where there's been all kinds of discrimination and as the society progressed and what have you that things things change and that is as best an answer I can I can give I, I don't have the, the 
the, the answer, and I know what the answer is, and I know what people want to hear. I, I have a question regarding the, um, the campaign strategy of the UNC. I know Minister Vassand is really the person I should be asking that to, but are you, are you willing to, to engage I'm, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm aware of, of, of how it works. Um, so my, my question is really, I have here, if, if the camera would like to zoom in on it, I have here um, an ad, it, it's a seven page pullout by, um, by the United National Congress. And as you can see at the top here, we have Kamala T 2015 TT, not the United National Congress 2015 TT, not the People's Partnership 2015. My question is, what is where is the, is, is, is the strategy behind this? I mean, I, I, the, I'm supposed to say at this point by, by my people who put me here that, that maybe it's because she's one of the only people who, who hasn't left cabinet. And I, I have to point out that, that Congratulations to yourself as well that you haven't resigned. No, I think, I think that well. many of us are still very much in the cabinet. Yes. I, some might say many, yeah. many is a relative too. Um, <laughs> but the, but the question still stands. What is the strategy going towards? Is it, is it, meaning, is it a Kamala Rowley campaign? And, well, then, I mean, and then what happens to all the backseat people like yourself waiting to... to, to yeah, I mean, I, mean big, I went and registered for my ID card when I was 18 years old. Me too. Okay. I've been a member of other organizations, all right? Um, and I've always been political. I've never, not been my first stint in electoral politics, okay? But I have always known Trinidad politics that if you have a good leader, you have a leader that is very much accepted by the electorate, that people tend to, their, their vote tends to go to, towards that. All right, and, and, and it's, it's more of a leader, it's very much a leader centric, and I think in all politics, if David Cameron was not the individual that he was, would the, would the, would the conservatives have won in, um, in, in, in England? If, you know what I mean? I think if you look, if you look at all electoral campaigns um, uh, throughout the world, there is a leader that people will gravitate to. And, and I, I think that's just a natural human, human instinct. Yes, all of us play a part. And I'll tell you something, when you, look, when you look at the slate that is being put up by the United National Congress slash the People's Partnership, because, Uni because the United National Congress still has its own, um, for instance, I'm a member of the Na United National Congress, okay? And I, I blow my own trumpet. When you look at the slate that is going to be put up for the 2015 election, that coupled with a very popular leader, I think we have a winning, um, th that's a winning formula, okay? We could be as great as we want to be as, as individual members of the, of the UNC or the People's Partnership. And if we did not have a leader that people really and truly gravitated to, then we would have a problem. But it is, the campaign is focused on the benefits of one, of well, one person, the no. highlights of Well, one. I think the, the, what, the what, it, what it says is that you have an extremely capable leader that has been able to run a government over the last five years, that has a vision for this country, and use, u using people Again, capable people um, within the cabinet, because the prime minister can't do all of this. All that has been done over the last five years has not been done by one individual. But she is, a, she is the figurehead of the, of, the, of the government, and she is the person um, that people will gravitate to. Uh, Mr. Kiddies, um you mentioned having a leader, and we believe that, that a leader is supposed to be someone who has integrity someone mm -hmm. who has um, positive characters. Um, would you say that when we look at our leader, um, can we see integrity? I mean, because we turn on the television and we see a lot of things and the young people in our society today are cocooned in, in, in a world of technology and, and the media. And it's so easy to believe the things that we see and hear on the television and otherwise. Um, would you say that, that our leader is a person of integrity and, and therefore um, would encourage us to gravitate towards her? Yeah. I, as I said earlier on, I run my own business for 25 years. I didn't report to anybody, okay? If I want, well, I went to work every day, but the only person I reported to was the bank, okay? I could come and go as I want. Oh. I come into this business in 2010 and I come in here where I have to report now to a boss. And all I can tell you is that working with Kamala Passad Bissessa over the last five years, I have seen leadership qualities in a person that very, very, um, I mean, 
it is unbelievable what she has been able and capable of doing because her cabinet was a very strong cabinet. When you look at some of the people who said, um, the other gentleman, the gentleman there just now said, maybe not everybody stayed in the cabinet. Okay? And when I look at what Kamala Prasad Bissessa had to deal with over the last five years, when you want to talk about capability, management style, um, integrity, dedicated to the job, understanding Trinidad and Tobago, understanding the direction that we have to take Trinidad and Tobago is, she is the person. Minister, okay? Minister. And she, she, she is very much, very much in charge. On, uh, all right? on, that, and on that point, just to cut you across there, but I mean, we are on the point that not much people stay there. At this point in time, we're looking at, you know, screening is going on, and they're looking at potential candidates. Uh, is it that we could expect from the United National Congress or, and the partners in the partnership that, you know, given that youth have been identified as a high part of the agenda, will we be able to see more youth on platforms, more youth involved in the campaign as candidates? And, you know, we know, we know why, and I agree with my colleagues said there about, you know, it's easy to believe what you hear in the media. But in going forward, you know, what can we expect from the partnership? And you're, you're a member of the, the UNC. You know, can you speak to anything to that? We have, we have youth councillors and so on, but can we expect to see youth candidates? Yes, I mean, I think the mix, the, the slate will be, a, will be very representative of Trinidad and Tobago. And I mean, when I look at the the result of the 2010 election, and I look at us in cabinet, I look at the, the, the parliament, and who sits in the parliament on the government side. It is very, very representative of, of, of um, Trinidad and Tobago society. And you minister, know, uh, minister um, just going back to the point on um, you know, the, having a strong leader and the allegations in the media and so on, every day when you take up the newspaper and you open it, if not even the very front page, especially with the rise of uh, tabloid media nowadays, you see a lot of um, allegations being thrown about, and I know sometimes as a politician, you'd find yourself in the position that you're looking in the newspaper, reading a story about yourself, and you, you may not even know anything about it. And if that is the reality you face as a politician, then why would I as a young person want to be involved in politics if I can face that very Because reality? you can make the change. And I am telling you, after five years of being in this, in this business, I have seen stories written, okay? Um, and I would look at it and say, it, it, was that the, and I would ask my wife, Suzette, I said, Suzette, was that the conversation I had with that reporter last night? You know? And she, would, she said, no, it's the complete opposite. But you, you, you need a thick skin in this job because at, at the, people are constantly throwing things at you, constantly. And whether it is the tabloids, whether it is talk radio, I mean, you listen to talk radio and I switch and I go to a music radio, okay? I can't, I can't handle it. All right, because some of the stuff that you hear on talk radio, for instance, or what you read in the newspapers, it is so wrong for <laughs> any editor or any host on, on talk radio to make those statements. It is just plain and simply wrong. What's but it? as a politician, if you had to deal with every word that is being said against you, you wouldn't leave home. We've got, three minutes, we've got three minutes, so let, right, let's so no make home. the most of it, folks. With, um, with specific questions to, to the media, I was browsing the UNC's website, uh, and in the media section, I found a Voices advertisement, which I'm sure the viewers would be familiar with, uh, that referenced the Immigration Division. Now, I work at the Immigration Division, and the video explicitly stated that it's two weeks to get a machine readable renewal uh, at the Immigration Division in uh, Frederick Street at the moment. And I know for a fact that that's false. Uh, it's currently two and a half months to get a machine readable renewal and four months to get a first time machine readable application. So my question relates to why is it that a government advertisement is, but I have to say government propaganda, is being hosted on the UNC's website. Where did those funds come from to, to create those um, advertisements and why is it explicitly false and being promoted as, as true? Yeah. And be before you answer, while we're on the issue of tabloids, I mean, we have the, the norowley.com campaign launched this week. And, and my, my question really quickly is the, the, the COP um, distanced themselves from such a campaign. And, and, and we, we heard earlier, no, no tabloids, no, you said avoid bad publicity, that kind of thing. Um, one, how does it square off? Two, with regards to uh, Minister Prakash's statement about distancing himself, is this indicative of a divorce in the, in the People's Partnership? No, I don't think there's any divorce. We have our little arguments every now and again, which is normal for any, 
any, any grouping, all right? But let me deal with the, the issue of like, for, for instance, immigration. Those, those the two week um, schedules would have been what is it supposed to be? Sometimes it goes off track. And I know for a fact that right now it is off track. And it is, in fact, like two and a half months to, to, to get a passport, all right? But typically the way it is set up and the way it is structured, you should be able to get your machine readable passport within a two week or less period. And a question um, for, I know that a lot of people would like to know, as a taxpayer, what are we doing about the potholes in the road? Are you fixing them? Well, <laughs> 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 i tell you something, you tell you something, you cannot go to one place in this country that you don't see where, we, where there has been infrastructural development. So I have to there, are a lot, there are a lot less potholes than there used to be. But we need some access roads like um, Shagaramas, one way. Well, that's not a pothole way. fix, huh? That's yeah. a huge a huge infrastructural project there. So I have to refer to um, your comment that it, it's supposed to be two weeks. The advertisement was very specific when it stated that you, you can get a passport in two weeks. This uh, video was hosted in, I think, on the 23rd of March uh, yeah. on, the, on YouTube. And at, in March, no, it was actually six to eight weeks for machine yeah. readable renewal and eight to 10 weeks for a first time machine readable application. So again, I have to ask, why is it that this government advertisement uh, being, host, being displayed to members of the, of, of the citizenry is being not only hosted on the UNC website, but is explicitly false? No, I, w I wouldn't say it's explicitly false in that, um, if, that, was, if, that, that was in March, if that was in March, no, if that was a dated in March, you probably find that around March time that we did in fact have it under control. No, it, sir. That, that's, well, again, well, that's well, explicitly I, I, I don't know, so I, I right. won't be able to answer um, that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, we, we are at our, our, our limits for time this evening, but I, I, must, I must say it, 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 it's ending. I ain't finished. Like, I ain't finished. <laughs> well, I mean, let me, give you a, let me give you a chance to give you your closing segue because no. we are actually out of time. Yeah. 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 I, I, What's uh, going on with the e my, 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 I, I prefer if they have the last say, but before they have the last say, I would just like to say uh, that for the first time, I have seen a government respond to people for the first time. And I have been at the other end of governments in my business life, in my social activism and what have you, where they would not even look at you, okay? And this is a government, I'll tell you something, this is a government that actually responds. It's not perfect, like everything else, nothing is perfect, okay? And but we're dealing with a situation in Trinidad and Tobago that will in fact take another decade before you see a much better Trinidad and Tobago. But it is going to take that long. It is going to take money. It is going to take a whole mindset of, 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 of the changing Trinidad and Tobago into really understanding that that red, white, and black is serious business. This is not no jokey business. And that we really and truly have to, to look to build, a, build our country. And when I hear young people say, well, that's not for us. We don't want to get involved. Forget that, guys, ladies. Forget that. You have to get involved. Otherwise, it will not happen. And therefore, we really and truly look forward to young people coming to the fore and you know, signing up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to fix this country. <laughs> Mr. Kadis, thank you so very much. Let them have the last program. Uh, we, we do have someone who wants to have the last say before we wrap up. Not too sure if this is your portfolio to say. It's a statement on another question, right? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, what's really going on with the E-Tech part? Right? A lot of technocrats will want to know this. <laughs> That's a question, right. not a statement. Well, you want a statement about the last year? I'll talk to you afterwards. That's a question, not a statement. But we, we really, yes. unfortunately, folks, we really, we really, really have to wrap it up. All right. Now, you see, when the producers at the think tank, uh, Stefan and, 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 and Abby and the rest of the crew, came together for the concept of the chair, I mean, tonight is a clear demonstration of exactly what we intended, to demystify the whole electoral process, to create a real conversation, because too many of us in Trinidad and Tobago have gotten accustomed to Pekong, small talk, the corridor alley and the, and, and the water cooler discussion, as opposed to getting the facts or sitting down with some of the people who do it, like yourself and getting our young people to ask the questions, to have that deliberate, untethered, unadulterated, pure and unfiltered conversation. And tonight, I think we achieved that in a real sense. It's the second edition, and I'm extremely proud of the, of the panel, I'm extremely proud of what, of what was achieved this evening, and it's only just begun because we're gonna continue. Next week, the chair continues as we meet every Tuesday with people like yourself uh, having the discussion about 
where and what and how we should go as we move down to September 7th and the general election. So I want to thank you once again for being a part of it. Some people say it's, it, it, it's an experiment and, 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 and people here are really putting themselves up and it's a tough call, I'm sure you would have realized going through the process with the young people, but indeed one that I, I think you, 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 you served extremely well with the process this evening. Once again, thank you very much to the panel and to you, Trinidad and Vega. Thank you for, for uh, of course, locking into another edition of The Chair. Join us next week, Tuesday at 9 o'clock, when the conversation continues and another guest will be sitting in the chair for more discussion right here on Synergy TV, Real TV. My name is Brian Haynes. Have yourself a good evening, folks.